uh, here to bring you your daily epic interviews. This is a weekly Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. live broadcast where we bring to you conscious business owners and conscious practitioners that are available to us at all times. And especially now during this time of the COVID-19 crisis and, and uh, today the weather, the wind is howling out there. But we bring you conscious business owners that can help us navigate through this time, whether it be through tips or just hearing their story and seeing their light. So again, my name is Samantha. I want to thank Lisa from Epic Tri-County CT. She's in Cheshire working our fee. Tell her hello. Let her know how you're feeling today. And pay attention because we're going to be rolling out all these beautiful links and information in that feed. So again, I wanted to say thank you. I wanted to also acknowledge that we are here with you during this time. If you're in need of prayer or just someone to talk to, please reach out. We're wishing everybody health and prosperity and um, abundance during this time. All right. So today I have a really special guest. She is coming chock full of information and tips to share with us. Absolutely brilliant woman. Her name is Linda Poutney, and she um, is the owner of Mindful Self Health. And Linda is going to share her love and her light about all her passions. And I know enough said, I'm taking up time because Linda has so much information. We're going to bring her right on. So give me one second and we're going to introduce Linda. Poutney. There she is. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hey, thank you, Samantha and Lisa. Oh, thank you for being part of this journey. You've been with us since the beginning. I yep. met you through the Avon Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Right in Avon. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And you're part of the Wellness Way also, I understand. Yes, I am. So Avon that, Holistic yeah. Chamber and the Wellness Way. Yep. Right, right. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, Linda? Like, sure. I'm a holistic health coach, and I'm also a trained mindfulness teacher. And this is a passion. It's a, it's a love for me, but it's one that came from living through something and having something like mindfulness come in and come alongside me and give me tools to negotiate a hard time. So about 10 years ago, I went through a, a difficult, stressful time. I was on the end of 15 years of, as a bereavement facilitator. And I think I had what was known as compassion burnout a little bit. And I um, was just down and out. And then a couple of losses happened. And you know what? I was told about uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction, MBSR for short. So I went and took the class. It's an eight-week course. Um, I took it from someone in Hartford, Connecticut. And it was life changing for me. And at the time I was in the middle of, um, I had retired early and I was going to finish up a master's in counseling. Mm -hmm. So I had gotten my degree in master's in um, human behavior and family studies. And two of my teachers, as I was taking this mindfulness course, were actually came out about being mindfulness instructors. So I was like, wow, this is meant to be. And we started our classes. It was at UConn School of Social Work. And we started every day with, ah, you know, mindfulness, awareness of breath, a body scan. And I just sort of, I gained so much from this, this practice doing it in a community, in a classroom. So um, back to the MBSR. It's the eight week program. It was started, and this is where my training comes from, in the Center for Mindfulness by a man named John Kabat-Zinn in the early 1980s. And that's at the UMass Medical School. So it actually took me um, four and a half years to go through the program to teach it. Yeah. It's very involved. And, um, and, and as I did this, uh, it was changing my life at the same time. So as someone who is no stranger to anxious thinking and and just falling prey to the whims of the mind the thoughts coming and going and you know i want to say in my words it's, it's buying into you know some of the thoughts and they they take me for a ride and i realized that there's something we all have and it's something we're born with this ability to be present with awareness in this moment of time right here and right now and I wasn't perfect at it. And that's why I didn't come out and start teaching sooner. And then I realized, wow, that type of thinking is, is really common to all of us, this 
self-critical thinking and I started seeing that as just more thoughts and patterns of thoughts. My, my training, my education in psychology was okay, patterns of thinking, big deal, nothing there. But you know what, these patterns of anxious thinking, especially because they come out now in this time of COVID-19, can kind of take us for a bigger ride. They can bring us into a little panic. And so even in my mindfulness training, I've seen a lot of that with myself. I have to put my white lab coat on and I'm my own I'm my own guinea pig in a way, and I teach mindfulness all over at um, health centers. I teach at Sharing the Light in Avon, Connecticut, at Be Kind in West Hartford, and out of my West Hartford office. So I also do um, classes with teachers and in large corporations. So in doing this, I've come to see that there's a common experience that we all have. I mean, I've had engineers raise their hand and say, oh, I can't sleep and anxiety's present for me. And, and the big aha moment for many people in my teaching is that these thoughts are just mental events. We don't need to be carried away by all of them. And there's an old um, Buddhist uh, me meditation practice. It's part of a meditation. It's called mental noting. It's when you just see the thoughts arise and go, ah, thinking. And you just say the word thinking to yourself a couple times as long as that thinking goes. And you just sort of embrace the thought. And you can do this with emotions also. It's a leaning into experience rather than a pushing away. Sometimes when we push away from that anxious thinking, or from that emotion of say sadness that isn't comfortable, we create resistance. And resistance is actually something that can be felt in the body. You can actually look at a time when this emotion or thoughts come up and you can say, oh, where am I, where am I feeling that in the body? Because emotions can be felt in the body long before we're actually cognizant of them, long before our you know, thinking mind is aware of them. So I've started to, in mindfulness is, really this is what the practice is about is letting yourself drop into the body and it becomes a safe place of grounding and this includes the heart letting yourself drop into areas of the body even i mean the heart is a wonderful place to drop into and just feeling what's there and allowing it to be there there's a little um one of the things that's been getting me through this time, which has brought up a lot of sadness at times, and 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 at certain times I'm, I'm trying, I find myself going back to the old pattern that I was so familiar with to me, and it was just about pushing those uncomfortable feelings away. So I've looked at them, I've kind of embraced them, much like you do with grief. If you have the pain of grief and it's here, if you push it away, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it feels, it's like it builds up stress. So resistance builds more stress. It becomes this big ball of anxiety and stress. So seeing things for what they are in the moment, feeling them in the body. So one practice um, I like very much is just taking a mindful pause for a minute, you know, a couple times through the day, at first just doing it once a day. And if you're game, I can bring you through it. It's, I use what's called the RAIN acronym. So R-A-I-N. So R is for R is for just recognizing what's here for you right now. Whether it's a myriad of thoughts drifting in, this monkey mind, or whether one deep-seated emotion like this sadness or fear is here. And just recognizing it for what it is. And then A is for allowing, allowing it to just be without the need to judge it or criticize it, just being with it. And then I is investigate. And you don't need the thinking mind for this. You can just investigate where in the body you're feeling this and you don't have to overthink it. It can be the first place you come to. Maybe you're feeling it in the throat in the chest, you know, a heavy weight in the chest. Looking at those physical sensations, does it feel like pressure, a tight ball, maybe it's in the gut, your abdomen feels tight or it actually hurts. Just leaning into this investigation. And the last is N, it stands for nurturing or natural awareness. And let me explain that a little further. 
Nurturing is just saying at that moment when you've recognized, allowed, and investigate, what do I need right now? You know, what what is this telling me that I could use? And this nurturing goes also into the end can also mean natural awareness. And I want to stress that when you've taken the time, even for a minute on a mindful pause, to bring yourself into awareness in this moment, right here and right now, you want to savor it. So many of us, we're such doers. We're not human beings, we're human doers. So we race from one thing to the next. So let yourself be with these moments of awareness, savor it. It's not a reason to say, ah, oh, I did the RAI and that's nothing I can leave now. Just go into that natural awareness and what you get from savoring and being with awareness is you actually are able to change the brain. You've probably heard a lot of mindfulness circles is about rewiring the brain. And what that means is we develop these patterns of thoughts and emotions much like I mentioned this anxious thinking. And actually both anxiety and depression are thought of as diseases of thought. So, you know, when you're there, you can actually, by being with this new natural awareness, nurturing and in presence, you are changing these neural pathways in the brain. And the more often you do that, that's why I like this one minute uh, mindful pause. But and you do it, the more you're changing the brain, the more you're reinforcing a new pathway for your brain to follow. And I think it's 21 or 24 days that it takes to change a habit. And this is the same thing uh, with our habits of thought. So, and one of the things I want to mention is that this mindfulness in being aware in the moment, it's done with a lack of judgment. And um, it's done with a sense of kindness to self in the environment. And this might seem foreign to many of us. And I know when I grew up, um, self-care was thought of as an indulgence. It was something that was looked at as, oh, how do I say it? Um, it was selfish, I guess I'd say. Um, and so on that end, the self-care is the best thing you can do, not just for yourself, but for other people, for the world, um, bringing awareness up in the entire universe can be done just individually by allowing yourself this one minute pause to be present. One um, thing that really, thank you for sharing that. Um, I knew that this was going to be uh, an epic interview just of tips and mm -hmm. information and what really resonated with me is when you were speaking about mindfulness and what it is and you mentioned that it is really about going into the body yes and feeling it in the body when I thought of mindfulness it's all about up here you know but when you made that connection down to the body I actually felt that I felt it <laughs> yeah that, that I felt it, so thank you. I'm sure everybody else did too, so thank you, thank you. And RAIN, what an applicable um, you know, acronym for today. Linda and I were discussing the wind and we're just saying we're gonna improv through it and that's what we're doing, so thank you. <laughs> um, you also mentioned in um, our talks about essential oil, essential oils. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in that realm? and then mm -hmm. we'll all together um, for. Sure, I'd love to. Yeah, so essential oils, um, essential oils are something I've used for over 25 years. And, you know, I more thought of them as aromas and as my husband used to say, they make the house smell good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't realize that boy, back in um, centuries ago, they were used much like plant-based medicine so when I came across about five, six years ago now, I came across doTERRA essential oils. Mm -hmm. And and I was in my, it was in, well, actually it was when I was getting ready to graduate with my master's and I, I was already doing mindfulness and they were just, they opened my whole life to transforming my health. Um, I was able to use oils. I have to say I was getting a little older and I had always stayed as Miss Natural and really didn't indulge in taking prescription drugs to speak of. And then I had my first little health issue, a thyroid issue. 
and got on one prescription and then it caused me not to sleep. So I got on another and then I noticed my mood wasn't really going along swimmingly. So I was able to use essential oils preventatively, but also to cleanse the body back to the body again. And cleansing the body of toxins is what um, really, really supports healthy immune system. And it supports this ability of our immune system to kick in, to fight off things and things even like what um, I was suffering from an autoimmune disease. And I was lucky enough to, uh, my doctor, my PCP had retired and I started off as someone who was very young and I, I thought, oh, she's never gonna go for essential oils. And I told her about it, she said, nope, I'm not right there with you. I love essential oils. So I was able to actually um, get off of my medication. That's not necessarily what it's all about. But for me, it was because it was wreaking havoc with my system and hormones were awry. The whole the whole nine nerves. I, I like to say I was a hot mess. So um, essential oils came in. I cleansed the body. I used one for I always had this affliction respiratory thing where I would be wheezing and I was on three inhalers and all of a sudden, a year later, I'm noticing I'm giving classes with doTERRA essential oils to doctor's offices, bringing in doctors and health centers. I'd come in with my little bag of three inhalers and I'd say, this was my life and this is my life. And I'd hold up uh, an essential oil, not necessarily this one, but um, and it was just life changing. And then it went and it went. Um, my husband was going to be the ultimate. He's a science guy. He was going to be the ultimate, oh, no, I'm not going to be doing that. And I didn't push it on him. All of a sudden, and my son, who's, who's in a pre-med program, and they are both started using the oils and seeing the results. We even use the oils on our dogs. So, <laughs> so they are life-changing. And I also want to say that really good brain support, and not just as we age with neurological things and supporting the nervous system. I like using them in meditation. The reason I do that is once you take an oil, just even by smelling it or applying it on the, on the back of the neck is where I like pulse points, and you use it in a little mindfulness pause or meditation. Mm. Uh, this sense of aroma, uh, this sensory, this what is it, olfactory nerve mm -hmm. is right here. So you smell it in and it makes a connection with the limbic area of the brain, which houses our emotions and memories. So we actually create a memory of mindful presence, which for me is normally peace and calming. And then I, I can open that vial of oil and the same, it has the same power to bring me back to that. I see. Just like the, um, you know, the, the certain things, um, grandma's apple pie, you know, you smell nope. that apple and it brings you back to being at grandma's house or the whole pumpkin spice thing with the fall in New England, you know, so that really, exactly. yeah, I, love, I, I thank you so much for sharing everything. I'm t um, I'm excited about everything that I'm learning today. And um, so as a mindful uh, coach and teacher and you, Tara, how are you? And I know you touched upon it a little bit and um, we spoke earlier uh, off camera. How are you caring for yourself? What What is your um, routine putting all these together? How does that work for you? and maybe share it with us, we might be able to take some of that and apply it to ourselves. So what's your favorite tool? Oh, I have to say my favorite tool um, is awareness of breath. And, and, and many people, when I started teaching mindfulness, would say, oh, I can't do this because my thoughts, my brain is really active and I have so many thoughts, I can't stop them. So you do not want to try to stop thoughts in a meditation or a mindfulness awareness of breath short practice. You really just bring the awareness inward for a moment and then just connect to the breath, this, this act of breathing. I mean, it's always available to us. It's like an ever present anchor. It's the breath you're born with and you connect to the breath and you do stay with the in breath and the out breath. But when you connect to it, the real grounding part of it in our mindfulness, talk is to be with the body. So how you do that is think of physical sensations in the body associated with the act of breathing. So where can you feel your breath the most? Where does it come to you most predominantly? You can feel the ribs expanding and deflating on the in and out breath, perhaps even the abdomen sort of 
pushes out on the in-breath. And then when you release air, it goes back in again. I like to start though, those are both great places if that rings, you know, that resonates with you. I like to start with the nostril area, just bringing the awareness to the breath in the nostrils and what physical sensations are there. So if you wanna do this with me, just taking an in-breath, noticing the sensations from the in-breath, is cooler air coming in, maybe a tickling sensation, and then noticing a pause, and then on the out-breath, this warmer air coming back out, being released into the environment. You can feel with both the in and the out on your own now, you can feel things like sensations of pressure, tingling, sometimes burning or itching, but the temperature change is a big one and see, feeling, actually being with the experience of breathing in the nose. So you are now your nose, you're in your nose, you're, you're just being with the sensations of the breath. And I recently um, helped with a class at Copper Beach, an MBSR class. Mm -hmm. um, and I, this was really emphasized to me even more. And the instructor was talking about, uh, she's, her name is Ann Dutton, she was talking about one minute a day, go home. I think she had it three minutes, but you know, one minute is fine throughout the day and just connect to the breath. So it's not your thinking mind, which I always go, not the thinking mind that's thinking, breathing in, out. And it's not, you know, it's just being with the sensations. It's simply noticing and experiencing the sensations of the breath. And what you do when thoughts come up is you simply invite attention back to sensations in the body. So you like escort your awareness, your attention back to the body and the breath. And this is in itself the definition of mindfulness. Mindfulness is basically returning to presence. We already know how to do it. So big training you need, um, practice is great. And, and the training is really valuable because it'll keep you on into the practices. But we know how to do this. So we are relearning it. We're remembering how to do it. You just have to look at young children and, and animals and being with them and you'll see you'll see their awareness in the moment. Right. Our greatest teachers, our greatest teachers, as you are also, so thank you. Um I know you've you've given us so much. Lisa's sharing all types of um content in the comments. Linda was so gracious to put together a tip sheet that we're going to be making available. It's going to be in the feed. I'm also going to save it as a document on our face, um, Facebook page. But that tip sheet has a plethora of information that Linda graciously put together for us. So definitely, um, you know, find that link and and begin to use these practices to to help you lift up and not only but lift up but also to ground you know finding that beautiful dance that happens the steps that get us there so a um, couple more things because I know we had talked earlier and this is kind of imprompt you talked earlier about emotions and feeling the emotions that we all feel throughout the day especially now enhanced with the COVID-19 and can you explain how mindfulness might play in for me? I'm going to speak for myself here. Um, if I'm feeling joyous and um, almost quirky and all of a sudden my mind says, oh, you, you should not be smiling right now. You should not be joyous right now because of the situation or because what others are feeling. Can you give us your take on that a little bit? Um, sure guide you know guide us through that what i'm hearing you say is that all of a sudden a thought aro arose yeah. and the thought was one of almost judgment or self-criticism a little like this isn't the time to feel good or be happy and i've seen those in myself lately and and just seeing it as thoughts we have eighty thousand of them a day latest harvard research that's one a second so they're not all worth acting upon even just giving it a label back to that mental noting practice. Ah, critical thinking. This is your critical thinking. And you have these patterns, we all do, of critical thinking. We're, we're hard on ourselves, more in the West 
than you know than anywhere else and this is our claim to fame we drive ourselves so hard so just seeing it as thinking and allowing yourself to experience the whole realm of emotions including when that fear comes up if you're inclined to feel fear for a moment you can be darn sure that other people are feeling the same thing we're all tied in the sense of community and, and connection with each other and just acknowledging it sometimes it helps for me to say ah this again, this this anxiety, this sadness, and just giving a label to it because it helps you not to re repress it, you know, not to deny it, to go away. It takes that resistance element out. Just confront it for what it is and say without judgment, and this is what's happening. So is it happening also for millions of other people? That's it. Thank you, thank you yeah. so much. Um, so as we begin to wrap up. I just want to let everybody know that um, we're going to, again, be having the links in the feed. And also, we've created a virtual page for Linda's events. So um, I know that you want to talk a little bit about that, what you're offering virtually, and then... Sure. Yeah, I've got a whole set of I mean, six classes for April, and it'll continue into May. And right now, we're just doing all our classes at no charge. They're complimentary. And the mindfulness classes, um, what have I done here? April 14th and April 29th at 5 p.m. And there's Zoom classes. They'll be recorded. So if you sign up for them, I'll send them to you if you can't make it. And you'll just learn some more simple tools. There's so many more. There's a little body scan. And you'll learn some of the benefits. Mindfulness is uh, up to 68% effective for anxiety, depression, insomnia. And it really increases that ability to have emotional resiliency and coping. So I hope you join me. It's, it's mindful.synduit with a Y, S-Y-N-D-U-I-T dot com. And that's where the listing of all the classes is. Sign up for one. And I hope to see you there. Right. We also have that duplicate list on our epic tribe page that we created just for yeah. you too so a lot of yeah. different ways to find you a lot of different ways so again my friend i want to say thank you on behalf of myself and lisa and our whole entire tribe thank you for sharing your brilliant light and the information that i'm taking and we're taking with us really is something that is going to um really help i know for myself raise uh, my awareness to the self-care and also not being so critical up here with with samantha's little monkey brain so the critical you. monkey brain <laughs> yeah yeah so thank you thank you thank you and now i want to say um you know goodbye to all our viewers we'll see you tomorrow here at 11. tomorrow we're going to be talking with attorney uh kevin ferry and uh yoga instructor leslie uh gordon we have a chock full week of guests just for you. And until then, be well, be safe, stay healthy. And as always, peace out, Epic Scouts. And be safe in the Wednesday. Bye. 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 Be Thank well. you so much. Thanks, Samantha and Lisa. Bye.